Hi, I'm Tiffany, and don't go anywhere because profiles will be coming right up. Welcome to Profiles, I'm Marley Hall. Today's guest is singer Tiffany, who became internationally famous with a string of pop hits in the late 80s. She had back-to-back -back number ones with I Think We're Alone Now and Could Have Been, followed by I Saw Him Standing There, which also reached top 10. After a short break, we'll join our host Mickey Burns as he welcomes singer, recently turned actress Tiffany to Profiles. Welcome back to Profiles. Back in the 80s, singer Tiffany increased her popularity as a teen idol by touring at malls across the country. Several hits would follow. Today, she continues to sing and perform. She's been busy as of late as an actress starring in some feature films. Her most recent is a sci-fi original movie where she stars opposite her former music rival, Debbie Gibson. So let's join our host, Mickey Burns, on location from the Hotel Wells on the Upper East Side of Manhattan as he welcomes singer Tiffany to Profiles. Tiffany, welcome to our show Profiles. Thank you. It's Thanks good seeing me. you. Thank you, you too. And Mickey. Well, thank you. <laughs> and, well, and, and welcome to New York. Oh, I love New York. Your kind of town? My kind of town. I live in Nashville and I love it there too, but you know, as a woman, I love to come into town to New York and shop. Oh, yeah. It's first on my list. Yeah. Get yeah. some business done, shop again, and then have a nice Italian dinner. Sounds like a perfect I'm, day. I'm a happy camper. Okay. Now, you became, for our viewers, an international, uh, internationally famous uh, for a string of hits back in the 80s. In 87, you released a cover of I Think We're Alone Now. It became a huge hit, making Tommy James, the writer of the song, a very happy man. Yes. Uh, how did that come about, that song? My producer at the time, when I met George Tobin, yeah. I was 14. Wow. In a studio in Burbank, California, which he owned. I'm sure. And I was in there doing a country and western at the time. We said country and western. Yes. Demo tape. Uh, a lot of people don't know that I started off in country music when I was 10 years old. Right. So right. I came to Nashville when I was 10 and tried to, you know, pursue a record deal. No one wanted to sign me. Right. Went back to California, still plugging away with the music industry met George Tobin, and he sat me down in the chair and he was like, do you know any Beatles songs? And <laughs> had me singing all these different yeah. things and I was like, okay, a little overwhelmed. Uh, next thing I knew, he was talking to my parents about sure. signing me as an artist and getting me a record deal. Right. And he took me in a pop direction. At first, I did not want to do it. Yeah. I did not yeah. want to record I Think We're Alone Now. Like the song, Yes. but what, I think I was more afraid of becoming a dance artist okay. because I always, Envisioned myself with a band and being more Stevie sure, Nicks sure, kind of country yeah, yeah. Uh, with that edge. But you know, I took it home and my girlfriend started dancing around the room with it. <laughs> that was and it. And that was it. I was sure, in. Sure. And I did want to mention that uh, uh, that when I think we're alone now, uh, finally reached number one on Billboard charts, that it displaced Michael Jackson's Bad. Were you aware of that back then? Yeah, you were. <laughs> I, I was aware. I mean, that's a big deal. I think so. And, I think and so. as an artist, I don't think that, to be honest with you, I don't think it made a big, um, like, I didn't know how big of a deal. I was so young. I didn't sure, know that that sure. was, but I mean, I'm a Michael Jackson fan. Right. So I think in my head, I was like, ooh, is that okay? <laughs> and also, yeah. you know, I was kind of like, yeah. wow, people, you know, really like my record. That's to be in that company, I think is what that said to me is my dream is really coming true. Sure. Uh, now, of late, you've been busy as an actress, kind of branching out, and you've been starring in some feature films. Of course, your latest is a sci fi original where you star uh, with former music rival Debbie Gibson. Uh, tell us a little bit about the project. Well, we're hoping to at one point, you know, get away, uh, get rid of that whole 
Debbie Gibson, Tiffany rival <laughs> thing. Because the funny thing is we were never rivals. Yeah. Well, I think the media puts it together because you're competing for, you know, for that spot on the charts or, yeah, yeah. you know, and you're all lumped together. But we have never sat together and just talked as two people mm. until this movie. Until Mega Python versus Gatoroid. Right. And we laugh about it because who would have thought some campy sci-fi movie would have united us together where now we're, we really are friends and we're running for, for our life from these creatures. And, oh, so you're not rivals in the movie? We are in the movie and that's that would be accurate what, to say. That's what I read, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and that was, like, I guess, another thing that kind of railed us in when we read the scripts. It was like, how funny is this? Because Nikki and Terry, the two main characters, they're just on each other from the very beginning. I play a park ranger. Yes. Who's extremely zealous about keeping the natural, you know, balance yeah. of the Everglades. Mm -hmm. Nikki, Debbie Gibson, yep. comes in and causes havoc, releases pythons into my Everglades, and we're <laughs> at each other's throat from the very beginning. So some of the sci-fi movies have a huge audience. Oh, yes, they do. You know, I'm, I'm a fan of sci-fi, so this is like a dream come true for me. So there you go. Where do you hope to take your career from this point? Well, I would love to, you know, dig in a little deeper. Yeah, that's um, right. Definitely. Yeah. You know, I'd love to do some, some Lifetime stuff. I'm mm -hmm. a big Lifetime fan. Some drama. I would love to do some drama, some yeah, yeah. crazy woman, you know, <laughs> some crazy ex-wife or something. Yeah. Um, I'm in for, for a lot of different things. I. I Acting is something that I've always wanted to do mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, when I was 10 years old, and that sounds crazy, and went right. back yeah. to L.A. from Nashville. People were like, oh, you've got to do modeling, you've got to do dancing, you've got to do acting right. if you want to be discovered in this town. Right. So I took lessons, and I, we, my poor parents, they were going broke, driving me everywhere around yeah, town. Sure. Um, and then when I became successful as a singer, there didn't seem time to incorporate yeah, that so kind of stuff. It's all encompassing. Now I, yeah. I can. I have a son who's 18. He's in college. So I can really go back and just kind of relive a lot of my That's dreams. hard to believe you have a son 18. You don't look 18 well, now. Well, thank you. It's the lighting. It's the lighting. It's the light. <laughs> why, why haven't you done more Broadway? That is a dream of mine that I want to uh, accomplish. And that's something I've sat and talked to Deborah about mm -hmm, because she mm -hmm. has done she, yes, she uh, has. Broadway mm -hmm. very well. Very well. I may, yes. might add, yes. and she's great. So you know, it was she was talking to me about being a mom, and you know, it's something that she's always wanted to do as well. And yeah. who knows, yeah. it may happen. Good for you. And for me, I was like, "What's Broadway like?" Oh. Because that is definitely something I want to do. Eight shows a week. Yes, it's hard work, but um, that that is something I'm going to do for sure. Very good. You mentioned it briefly, but I had read that your, your first public performance with a band uh, was at a country and western nightclub you were 10 years old yes. uh, afterwards tell me if this is true that you passed the hat around and collected 235 dollars i did the reason i asked that question is because surprisingly your roots are in country they are not in, country. in pop no and that's one thing i love about country music is it is it's real yeah. um the yeah. appreciation for your fans that you're never bigger than your fans mm, very well um, said and that you can have the best of world, best best of both worlds. You can have a, a personal life. Yes. Take your family and your friends and your dogs, and everybody goes on the road. And the more that you have that around you, right? Um, the healthier you, healthier you are. I think the happier you are. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. isn't that what country songs are about, really? Real life. life. Real life. Yeah. And and I think I got that as a base as a performer. At eleven years old. Eleven. It would surprise me. You opened for country legend George Jones. What was the experience like at 11 years old opening for a legend? Well, amazing. I got, yeah, I, I amazing. Guess. I, got, I mean, to be on stage, you know, I was just a kid who loved to sing. Yeah. So I could be in the corner, you know, singing, and I it would have been the same thing. Yeah. But for me to have people watching me and, and then to be watching other entertainers, right. uh, you know, definitely always I was taking notes.